Good evening and welcome to the Locking Your Success Trade and Market Update for March 24th, 2013. Before we get going, we would like to remind you that this presentation is for educational purposes only. We are not financial advisors, nor are we broker-dealers, and we do not make specific trade recommendations. Any trades covered in this presentation may or may not be live. In the event they are computer simulated trades, we make the best efforts possible to make sure that they are accurately presented. However, because we are going off simulated data and possibly not executing them live, then the results may vary uh, somewhat. Also, the risk of trading options is substantial, so please be aware of all those risks prior to placing any trades, and be sure you understand the characteristics and risks of standardized options documentation available at your broker. Be sure to visit our trading blog if you happen to be watching this on YouTube. We have lots of neat things there. And the Rock Trading System is here. It should be uh, released this week, so I'm really excited about that. And uh, tune into the Options Tribe this Tuesday for details. Also, uh, we get some nice future programs coming out. The SSS Trading Series is coming out, as well as uh, the Checkmate Trading System. So those are some really good things to look forward to. All right, and if you'd like any direct access to... Our uh, current programs are out, the Bearish Butterfly, that can be found at bearishbutterfly.com, and the M3 system can be found at m3options.com. And if you're looking for the Options Drive, it's optionsdrive.com, nice and easy to get to. All right, let's take a look at the market. We got sideways move last week, more or less as expected. Uh, the market still looks like it wants to go up to me, and I do believe that we're still going to be making a run for this 1580 level. I not sure it's going to do it this week. We may run sideways a little bit longer, but uh, like I said, it, it looks like it wants to go up, so I would expect that. If the SPX does indeed make a run for 1580, that's going to draw the Russell up with it. And that's, what, about 25 points here? That'll pull a Russell about 25 points higher. And we had already talked about a level of 975 for one of the profit targets in the Russell. So it would be interesting to see if it actually gets there. You know, that said, we are way over extended from a long-term standpoint. You can see how far we are over our 200-day moving average. We're also still pretty far over the 50. We have our primary trend line down here in yellow. And I wouldn't be surprised if we do have a retracement that we take a shot down to that area. So to the upside, 975, to the downside, uh, 930 level, and or not, maybe even 920. If I was going to plan any income trades, they'd be in, the, uh, in, in that level. As far as the NDX, this continues to run sideways. It continues to be fantastic for options neutral trading. So, like again, this is the index to be in for the, pretty much all of this year. It's been nice and sideways. That's more than I can say for the Dow, which has uh, been probably as strong as the Russell. I mean, it's been, except for in this range, the Russell was outperforming it, but boy, this is a, this is a nice run for the Dow. And again, it looks like uh, it's probably going to break a little bit higher. So is it due to come back and set back into this level? This is, would be the level I would be looking for, 20 moving average, trend line support uh, for a pullback, look for the 14.3 area, possibly a touch lower. And to the upside, I'd look for the back side of this trend line up here in the uh, in the 14.8, 14.9 area. So we're going to be pushing 15,000 fairly soon if this keeps up. So in general, what I would expect is I would expect the, the SPX to make a run for that level we we're talking about and probably drag everything else with it, except for possibly the NASDAQ. The NASDAQ's been lagging quite a bit. All right, let's take a look at our positions. This week was certainly a lot quieter than weeks past. Uh, what I'll do is I'll just take a look at the V condors first. There's really nothing that needed to be done this week in these trades. So we're just kind of sitting here, and this position has not changed since the last update. As of right now, we're looking at an $1,800 profit. And if we take a look at the analyzed graph, it looks something like this. Really no concerns here. If the market decides it wants to hang here too much longer or backs off, we will be rolling out those calls, try and kick our expiration graph up a little bit. If it continues to creep up, then that would be good for us. It would be really nice for us to creep into the you know 970 level over the next couple of weeks. We shall see if that happens. Either way, this is a really nice looking trade as far as I'm concerned, so uh, no concerns there. If we swap over to the May position, this trade is going fine as well. This trade has had no adjustments. We've just been sitting here. It's up slightly. 
you know, one of the things that happened is we had a substantial volatility increase, which kind of you know, stopped us from gaining any profits here for, for the week. But, uh, you know, everything was fine. We're delta of minus 33. This thing looks really nice. Again, uh, what this likes is a creeping up market. If the market continues to creep up, we will do very well. And this is what we look like. There's not much to say about that. Let's take a look at our April bearish butterfly. The week being flat, there's not a whole lot to say about this either. We continue to be, in, there was no uh, no adjustments. We continue to be in the 940 and 960 butterflies. Our delta is very flat. We're still down about 10% on the trade, which isn't uh, a big surprise because we have had this constant up move and it is a bearish butterfly, uh, except for the, the little bit of sideways movement this week. And normally you'd get quite a gain on the sideways movement, but the volatility increase stopped that from happening. As soon as the volatility lets up, this will get back to normal relatively quickly. Uh, unless, of course, we get that big up move we're expecting, in which case we will chase this to the, the uh, 970 level. I actually like this trade as long as the market stays up. I don't like the risk we're taking to the downside necessarily, but I'm a little bit more comfortable since we entered the May bearish butterfly on on Friday because that's going to give us a little bit more downside protection should the market come out come come out however a bit of a risky position but uh, not really a concern to the upside here just a concern to the downside at this point we will be going into expiration guidelines a little bit early so I'm going to start cutting my delta down here and you know even though we're 28 days we will be 21 days next week volatility is so low this is actually reacting like a, day, a trade that's more like 15 days to expiration so Perfectly happy to start cutting my delta back, and like I said, it uh, it looks fine. Nothing uh, overly concerning with an up move, as far as I'm concerned. I'm more concerned about the downside. If we uh, look at the May bearish butterfly, this was entered on Friday. I ended up entering the position fairly close to the market. The market price, I don't know, was just uh, it's only slightly over 940, right? 945 uh, even here, and. I needed to do that to get my delta theta ratio in line. Even here, you can see how hard the market skewed. That uh, I'm I'm getting 104 uh, minus 117 delta almost at the money, and I'm, uh, my delta theta ratio is more than one to one. So we've got we're dealing with a heavily skewed to the upside market, and our guidelines put us up at 940 for an entry. Uh, to the upside, we can't do anything until over minus uh, over 960, in which case we can roll up 20 points, and we wouldn't be adding until 980. We might hit 980. I don't think we will, but it's possible. Uh, as far as hitting uh, into three thirds of a thousand, I would not expect that at all. And as far as the downside, if we pull back to 930, this will be looking really nice. Even if we pull back to 920, so I really uh, like the positioning here. I like it a lot. Uh, another thing that happened during the week, let's see, we went the May Condor, the May Bearish Butterfly, uh, the April Bearish Butterfly. Again, no adjustments yet. The only other open trade we had was the April M3 trade, which did get a minor adjustment. If we take a look at that, when the market started to pull back, if you remember right, we were positioned here with 10920 shorts and 10940 shorts. When the market started to pull back fairly hard here, right at the bottom of this candle, I was exceeding my delta limits. And you know, part of the reason was because I went in a little bit bullish. This was just enough to uh, just to, just enough to knock the position back. And what I ended up doing is buying back five of these 940s and selling five 930s. So if I was in a uh, in call spreads, it would be similar to just backing out of a 930, 940 call spread, or five of them to be more precise, which again, I don't like to do. However, we went and over hedged. We cut the hedging back. Uh, as we sit, our delta limits are still fine. We don't really have any uh, delta issue as we sit now. I am looking to back out of that adjustment as soon as I can where I would buy these 930s and sell the 940s again. However, you know, as we sit now, I'm not ready to do that. I do suspect I will have to do that because I am expecting the market to go up. This trade is sitting down about $1,200 right now, which has been a common theme for this for the last couple of months. We put the trade on, the market maker crushes the uh, prices, and we kind of get beat up a little bit. 
So here we sit. You know, a lot of that's to, due to the volatility that uh, that came into the market last week. So here we sit like this. Gamma trend is bad. Uh, that's why I am, like I said, seriously looking at putting this uh, position back to uh, all my shorts up to 940. And I wouldn't be surprised if we had some at 950 by the end of the week. So that is the April M3. This trade still looks perfectly fine. And that was all the trades we had open except for the April rock trade. This trade was entered 30 days to expiration as planned. And if I take a look at it here, 30 days to expiration was actually on the 20th. And I entered it in the morning by buying 10 9.30 put butterflies. And to balance that off, I had to buy six 970 call butterflies. The position looks like this. And if the price goes up, then we're going to be scaling into these 970s and then eventually scaling into 990s. Should the market hold? I really, really like this trade this month. Should the market come down hard? We should still be okay, but, uh, but I'd rather not have that happen. I don't mind a move down to the 930, 920 level. However, if we go much lower than that, it's going to cause us to uh, make some downside adjustments and shift to a more high volatility profile. We shall see if that uh, is to come to pass or not. I still believe, like I said, we're going to continue to creep up, and this trade does do tend to do well in creeping up markets. All right, that is all our positions. That is my make on the, take on the market, sideways to up. And I am looking forward to hopefully the rock being released on Tuesday. We're doing an Options Drive meeting. Make sure to go to OptionsDrive.com and sign up for that if you'd like to see it. And that's all I have. So I hope you have a wonderful week, and I will keep you up to date with any changes. Thank you, and good night.